Um, I think you, you briefed me to talk a little bit about um, uh, technology. So if we're looking at retuning the future, I think you had me down as, a, as someone who knew about technology and was from an innovative firm. I, I'm flattered, but I'm not, as you said, I'm not a technologist. Um, uh, but my areas of interest relate to, to organisational purpose, uh, mission and culture. So what I intend to do today is just talk through what I believe are the most uh, important contextual considerations in, in developing post-COVID technology strategies and then relate that to our experience and thinking at TV. So my experience with implementation of new technology is that all, all, they're almost always expensive at the outset, more expensive than you expect. Um, it can be hugely distracting, even if it goes well, and it can be doubly distracting if it's managed badly. And its success will be uh, more than, uh, you know, significantly more than 50% down to context rather than the actual technology itself, you know, the effectiveness of technology. So, you know, in that, what, what I mean by context there is the relevance to your organisational strategy, um, particularly alignment with culture, the culture of the organisation, how we work, how we think about things. And then, and then finally, operational design and, and whether there is, a complementary change going on. So my experience is that technology rarely drives change, but it can support it. So it's it's sort of looking at that that way round. So um, in terms of then what that uh, means, I think my sense is that um, success. Uh, um, will be even oh, you know, the, the, what will be even more determinant of success where um, technologies directly touch clients. So you, you asked me to talk about client facing technology. Um, I think that those those issues become even more pertinent where, where, where the client is involved because the client will have a very strong sense of um, their expectation, their feeling about that they get from your organization. I think that's something we underestimate. So whether the, um, uh, the technology supports existing models of delivery or whether they're perhaps you're looking at introducing new models where the technology itself is the engine of value, I think those, those factors re remain totally crucial. And so, so much of the value of professional services comes ultimately from how we make our clients feel. I mean, trust is crucial in that. Often clients buy from us reassurance. They're not they're not buying legal services. No one needs legal services or, um, you know, specifically accountancy. They're looking for reassurance that what they're doing is okay, that they're, that they're, they're, the risks they don't understand and manage. So if there's any misalignment between a new technology and the client's broader experience of the organization, then that will make them feel uncomfortable. And similarly, if they sense the lack of support or buy-in within the organization, um, for new technology, um, again, that, that will undermine the trust they have in the organization and the people that they, um, they look to. So get, to get your own people uh, and your clients to back a new technology, it must align, in my view, with the broader experience they're looking for and, and their expectation, and that, that technology should enhance that underlying expectation. So for us, in terms of implementing technology in this COVID situation, you know, what's as um, Carlo so um, what well uh, explained, you know, we've had this reset in expectation. We have this opportunity. The kind of the 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 status quo has been unlocked. So for us, the first step we're looking at new technology post COVID was to check in on ourselves. What had we learned from from the COVID experience in terms of what was important to our people? our clients, what's happening in society as a whole. What, so it's not about what technology is available, it's, what, it, it's about how we feel and what's important to us right now. The second step was then to consider the implications of this for our organizational idea. Was it still, was our organizational idea still aligned? Was it authentic for what we were actually feeling? Um, and then, then look at that and say, right, was the mission still relevant um, that was dictated by that? And then, then I guess where we start to think where technology might start to come in is where the, what are the priorities that we had set for ourselves near term pre-COVID? What what are they now? And I think that's where we can see some some input from from our experience. Those first two haven't changed. You know that was that was reassuring. We had that continuity running through. Um, sorry, my alarm's going off. Which 
help me something good now. So, um, uh, you know, finally, we then look at what's available to us that could um, help us achieve those goals, including technology, but it might not just be technology. And, and I think the key for me is that by taking this approach, you have a clear framework against which um, you, can, you can make your decisions about technology investment and prioritizing, certainly prioritizing that investment when there's a long list of things which we all kind of feel a pressure, we, we should be doing these things. You know, and it brings to mind the, the Does It Make the Boat Go Faster book by Harriet um, Beveridge, where, you know, the Olympic rowing team, you know, you ask, once you've got that framework, you can go, does that, does doing this help us to be what we want to be? So for us, we want to, you know, we're about helping innovative entrepreneurs make great things happen. So if we implement this, is that going to make us better at doing that? And if it doesn't, let's not do it. And actually, funny enough, a lot of, what our clients expect they are about the technology they're about the innovation they want some empathy from us but they're not looking for us to be them they want us to, to help them um, and so that that uh, um, alignment is there so i've run out